Over the next few episodes in this short educational series, I will summarise and share with you all you need to know about the monotremes and will focus on the Australian platypus. This episode will define monotremes, highlight the types of monotremes in Australia, discuss the history of monotremes with a focus on the platypus, and then cover the basic platypus morphology. So what are monotremes? Monotremes are egg-laying mammals that can be classified as oviparous. This means they produce eggs which develop and hatch outside the mother's body. Monotremes lack teeth, exhibit lower metabolic rates compared to other mammals, and have no defined nipples. Instead, they excrete milk from special mammalian glands on their skin. A key defining feature of this unique creature is the possession of a single cloaca, whereby the digestive, urinary, and reproductive tract opens into a single duct. Currently, there are only two living monotreme families, which includes echidnas and the platypuses, as shown on the images on the right. There are three common species of monotremes, which includes the platypus, the short-beaked, and long-beaked echidna. To summarise in the table, the platypus is widely distributed across eastern Australian freshwater streams and lakes in Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. The short-beaked echidnas can be found across Australia and New Guinea, while the long-beaked echidnas can only be found in New Guinea. The body sizes of these monotremes are somewhat similar, although the long-beaked echidnas are the biggest, growing up to 900 millimetres. In New South Wales, both the platypus and the echidnas are protected under the National Parks and Wildlife Act of 1974. This is particularly important for the Australian platypus population, given its near-threatened status. The platypus's diet comprises of mostly benthic invertebrates, while the short and long-beaked echidnas share relatively similar food sources that includes ants and termites. Overall, these monotremes have been suggested to exhibit mosaic evolution, whereby they share ancient and specialised features. Have you ever wondered what the platypus sounded like? Pause this video and quickly head over to our blog now. The link is found in the description below. Moving on to the history of monotremes, the early mammalian tree includes three groups that consisted of the monotremes, placentals, and marsupials. Interestingly, the monotremes were the first group to diverge in the early Cretaceous period, as shown in the timeline. It's thought that the high taxonomic diversity in this period was a period of diversification for the early Cretaceous monotremes, rather than a time of origin. Despite the diversity of ancient monotremes, as mentioned earlier, there are currently only two living families. The first discovered Australian mammal was an early Cretaceous monotreme named Steropodon galmani. Shown on the top right, it is thought to be about 110 million years old. Fossilised lower jaw molars were found at Lightning Ridge in New South Wales, and further analysis of the teeth structure found they have shared similarities to later platypus fossils. Whilst the oldest monotremes discovered to date is Telenophos trusleri, which was found in the flat rocks along the Victoria coast and is estimated to be just over 115 million years old. Based on its small teeth structures shown on the bottom right, it was likely to be a small mouse sized monotreme, which interestingly also shared similar structures to Galmani. Another platypus tooth from the early Pleistocene was then also discovered in southern Argentina near the Patagonia region. Together with the previously discovered fossils, it provided scientists with strong evidence to show that ancient monotremes were widely distributed across southern Gondwana, where they spread from Australia to South America via Antarctica. Platypuses and echidnas were thought to have diverged about 20 to 45 million years ago. With improved technology and analysis techniques, the synergy of DNA-DNA hybridization, mtDNA, and immunoglobin sequencing this helped to narrow it down to 21 to 25 million years ago. Monotremes are close to over 200 million years old. It's clear that these creatures are ancient. Scientists believe that their longevity was due to the isolation near eastern Gondwana, which lacked competition. Coupled with the successful specialization, this enabled the monotremes to successfully exploit their habitats and underutilized resources by marsupials and other vertebrates. Quick quiz! True or false, in the 18th century, the platypuses was thought to be a hoax. And the answer is true. Back in the 18th century, the first platypus specimen reached Britain. It was actually thought to be a hoax. The diagram shows the external features of the platypus. The platypus has a streamlined body, which enables it to propel through the water. It's covered in dense waterproof fur, which provides it with thermal insulation. Since the platypus closes its eyes, ears and nostrils underwater, its soft and pliable bill is an important sensory body part with electroreceptors that are sensitive to underwater pressure changes. Its flat broad tail is the main storage area for fat and its web limbs have strong sharp hind foot claws that are important for locomotion, grooming and burrowing and also anchoring. 
Males have spurs that are attached to the venom gland in the upper leg. Females are also born with spurs, however they fall off before they reach adulthood. The platypus also exhibits sexual dimorphism, whereby the males tend to be larger than the females. The size also varies with population and location, however generally platypus body size were smaller in northern Queensland and tend to increase moving south towards Tasmania. Despite these variations, there lacks evidence to link latitudinal distribution as some platypuses found in west flowing New South Wales rivers were larger than those in the easterly direction. Want to test your knowledge? Go to our blog and complete exercise 1 for this episode.